The through line in my work that I see is like how easily um, we can turn people into the other. Long before terrorism became fashionable in the West and commonplace in the East, there was a bombing at the Sovereign Center in Delhi. A major event in India, it launched six months worth of stories in dailies across the country in every language, but it garnered next to no international attention. It appeared once in the New York Times, that due in a single column on the front page, elbowed by an expansive story about the island nation Nauru's failed attempt to host the Miss Universe contest. This story is, is a, the topic that you're talking about there is terrorism. Mm -hmm. I know you've also written um, a novel um, which also touches on the same subject matter. W what draws you to terrorism? I think I'm drawn to it partly because it is such an urban phenomenon and I'm someone who's very interested in urban space, especially in crowded cities like Delhi. And there's a way in which like all the pressures of a city come to bear on this event that has happened where it sort of infiltrates the minds of the inhabitants of mm. the place even if they weren't present for it. So it's a kind of shared psychosomatic disease. I read maybe an interview where you've talked about your relationship to the idea of being an Indian writer, mm. where you've said you maybe like want to take on that label and then sometimes people are not so comfortable with you having it. Mm -hmm. I wonder how this complicates matters. Do you feel like an American novelist? It's, it is a very interesting question because I've now lived off and on in the US for 16 years, so there's no doubt that I'm quite American mm. in many ways and that I've imbibed the culture here. But like many immigrants, I've lived with a sense of denial and that sense of denial is that I will move back to India um, or that I spend a few months every year in India anyway. I think that's led to just a kind of general confusion in my body and person even more than in my writing where um, I can keep flipping the switch and, and thinking I'm someone else. Um, that Confusion is very productive for a novelist because you can then enter different perspectives, mm -hmm. but it's really unhappy as a, to be that way as a person. So you, you've written two books now. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what you've learned from the experience. There's this big movement in, in American letters which is show, don't tell, and I actually love telling. Like I, I think that the essayistic impulse where you trust the energy of the voice mm. and you don't have this kind of over-dependence on scenes, which is a very cinematic import into fiction, um, is something I've been trying to do. And it's a closer in line with the traditions that are in India. Mm. The other thing is this, to me, is that American fiction has somehow automatically conflated storytelling with individuals. Mm. There's no rule saying that a story is about one person. And I don't mean like uh, stories where you have spliced you know, shifting chapters from different perspectives. I mean, I don't understand why you can't shift between characters in a sentence mm -hmm. or in a paragraph or in a scene. Uh, that kind, that to me, honestly, that exaltation of the individual is again like um, a kind of inheritance of the West, and it has less to do with the kind of writing that I'm trying to do. Brilliant! Thank Thanks. you so much. <laughs> Thank um, you. Great. Okay.